Thank you for standing by. This is the conference operator. Welcome to the ADCO Limited year-end 2019 results conference call and webcast. As a reminder, all participants are in listen-only mode and the conference is being recorded. After the presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. To join the question queue, you may press star then 1 on your telephone keypad. Should you need assistance during the conference call, you may signal an operator by pressing star and zero. I would now like to turn the conference over to Mr. Miles Dugan, the Director of Investor Relations. Please go ahead, Mr. Dugan. Thank you, and hello, everyone. We're pleased you could join us for our fourth quarter 2019 conference call. With me today is Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer Dennis DeChamplain, Senior Vice President and Controller Derek Cook, and Vice President, Finance, Treasury, and Risk, Colin Jackson. Dennis will begin today with some opening comments on our financial results and recent company developments. Following his prepared remarks, we will take questions from the investment community. Please note that a replay of the conference call and a transcript will be available on our website at atco.com and can be found in the investor section under the heading Events and Presentations. I'd like to remind you all that our remarks today will include forward-looking statements that are subject to important risks and uncertainties. And for more information on these risks and uncertainties, please see the reports filed by ATCO with Canadian securities regulators. And finally, I'd like to point out that during this presentation, we may refer to certain non-GAAP measures, such as adjusted earnings, adjusted earnings per share, funds generated by operations, and capital investment. These measures do not have any standardized meaning under IFRS. As a result, they may not be comparable to similar measures presented in other entities. And now I'll turn the call over to Dennis for his opening remarks. Thanks, Miles, and good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today on our fourth quarter 2019 conference call. ATCO achieved adjusted earnings of $365 million in 2019, or $10 million higher than 2018. ATCO's ability to grow its adjusted earnings during a period of slowing global economic activity and significant political, economic, and social change is a testament to ATCO's diversified portfolio and resiliency. Higher 2019 earnings were partially due to incremental earnings from ATCO Structures, which was busy working on the LNG Canada Cedar Valley Lodge, Lodge contract. ATCO Structures has also successfully repositioned its business to capture new opportunities and customers. ATCO Structures continued to grow its global space rental and workforce housing rental earnings in 2019 by adding to the existing rental fleet. They also opened a new space rental branch office in Colorado to supplement the established workforce housing business and growth in permanent modular construction in the United States. They have diversified their customer base in the last few years by expanding into permanent modular construction of multifamily housing, schools, hospitals, and other institutional buildings. In 2019, permanent modular construction of hotels was added to the expanding list of diverse structures they can manufacture. They completed the manufacturing supply for a Marriott Fairfield Inn located near Oakland, California. Manufacturing work for a second Marriott Hotel in California is already underway and will be completed in 2020. These diversification opportunities supplement the ongoing workforce housing projects we are well known for and continue providing for our global natural resource customers. At Frontech generated higher earnings in 2019 from additional North American camp services and maintenance contract, which include the Tuscan Ridge contract in Chico, California, and a contract expansion at the BC Hydro Site C Two Rivers Lodge in Northern British Columbia. ATCO Frontac also continues to be busy with various facility operation and maintenance contracts for government and military organizations. In 2019, Frontac secured a contract extension with NATO in Bosnia and won a contract rebid with NATO in Kosovo. 2019 was also ATCO's first full year of ownership in Neltume Ports. Neltume recorded adjusted earnings of $15 million in 2019, $11 million higher than in 2018. Neltume completed another acquisition in 2019, 
In February of that year, they acquired an additional 15% ownership in the Terminal Puerto Rico port, bringing the total ownership to 50%. This acquisition gave Neltume operational control of the port and strengthened its port operator role in the concession. More recently, in January 2020, Neltume entered into a 50-50 joint venture partnership with Terminal Zarate to build and operate a roll-on, roll-off automobile terminal in Mobile, Alabama. This port is in construction now and is expected to be in operation in 2021. Their partner, Terminal Zarate, operates the largest roll-on, roll-off automobile terminal in Latin America. This investment opportunity in Alabama allows Neltume to work with an experienced and respected partner while growing and diversifying by both geography and product type. Neltume Ports has been a steady earnings performer for us so far in our short ownership tenure. In 2019, there were some headwinds to increasing cargo volumes because of global trade disputes but we see these issues as temporary and believe our investment thesis will hold true in the medium and long term. On the energy side, Canadian Utilities continues to be a steady earnings contributor for ATCO in 2019. Maintaining stable year-over-year -year earnings was quite an achievement, considering that 2018's adjusted earnings included $18 million associated with the Alberta Balancing Pool's termination of the Battle River Unit 5 PPA. Canadian Utilities also recorded $6 million in earnings in 2018 due to an early energization incentive at Alberta Powerline for completing construction ahead of schedule. Due to all the great work of Canadian Utilities employees, they closed that earning gap in 2019. In January, we declared a first quarter 2020 dividend with a 7.5% increase over the dividends paid in 2019. ATCO has increased its common share dividends every year for 27 consecutive years. We're very proud of that track record of dividend increases. ATCO's dividend payout ratio continues to be lower than the average of Canadian utility peer payout ratios. That lower payout ratio gave ATCO some additional room to grow the dividend while maintaining its financial strength. Going forward, we will continue to work to create additional value and create the right environment for future dividend increases. That does conclude my prepared remarks, and I'll now turn the call back over to Miles. Thank you, Dennis, and we'll uh, turn the call over to the conference coordinator now for questions. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. In the interest of time, we ask you to limit yourself to two questions. If you have additional questions, you are welcome to rejoin the queue. To join the question queue, you may press star, then 1 on your telephone keypad. You will hear a tone acknowledging your request. If you are using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before pressing any keys. To withdraw from the question queue, please press star, then 2. Webcast participants are welcome to click on the Submit Question tab near the top of the webcast frame and type their question. The ATCO Investor Relations team will follow up with you by email after the call. Once again, anyone on the conference call who wishes to ask a question may press star 1 at this time. Our very first question comes from Linda Ezergailis with TD Securities. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, I, I'm wondering if you could give us some context uh, beyond just some of the trade dispute headwinds uh, that you saw emerging last year related uh, to your port's um, investment. Are you seeing any impact um, of the coronavirus on your port's business, and might you uh, see some prospectively? How are you um, adjusting your outlook uh, to reflect this uh, development? Uh, thanks, Linda. Good morning. Uh, there's been very limited impact um, that we've seen so far um, in our uh, in our ports business. You know, it's a diversified you know 16 ports that that we have, but there there's been no material impact um, yet on the uh, as, as a result of the uh, of the coronavirus. Okay. 
and and that would be your expectation going forward or I guess it's a dynamic situation. Yeah, but. who's 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 to know? I mean, Europe went up in flames in just a a, a few days, so we'll yeah. see uh, where you where we have uh, we have our uh, pandemic plans. Uh, Neltume has their pandemic plans. Um, and we're continuing to uh, to operate, and right now we're uh, our operations are not materially impacted. Let's all hope they continue not to be. Um, yes. Yes. Um, so furthermore, on your Neltumi business, um, very inter interesting toehold into uh, Alabama and um, a different type of um, uh, a different type of uh, roll-on, roll-off uh, terminal. Uh, can you talk about uh, what sort of additional opportunities there might be in North America and what the cadence of those might be? And then, can you comment on? Um, the roll-on, roll-off, is that expected to be a significant new line of business for Nell Toomey, or is this more of maybe an opportunistic um, partnership? Uh, uh, th thanks for the question. In terms of uh, North America, and, I, and you talked about cadence, I mean, the, the deal flow at, um, at Nell Toomey um, is, I'll say, relatively high. You know they're continuing to operate to examine opportunities uh, in North America and South America as well. They're kind of like the the home base. So you know, in, including ports in Canada, like you know, they're we're looking at uh, opportunities there. The cadence uh, North America in terms of partnerships, um, or sorry, is a roll on roll off a kind of a new new element that we want to get into. I mean, the Terminals Rate, they are the large, they operate the largest uh, roll on, roll off in, in LADAM. So to be able to uh, partner with them um, kind of helps to uh, potentially open doors for us if, with future roll on, roll offs as, uh, as the business progresses. Uh, cadence, you know, we when we made our investment in Nel Tume, uh, there was a you know a, a sizable amount of that purchase price was on Nel Tume's balance sheet to finance growth. Uh, they have eroded into some of that uh, cash. They still have uh, a, a very healthy cash balance to uh, to fund their growth efforts. So right now they haven't, uh, there hasn't been a, a cash call, so to speak, to fund new growth. Um, they do have their uh, their growth funds and finances in place to continue to execute on uh, a lot of these transactions that we've been seeing from Nel Tume. That's helpful context. Thank you. I'll jump back in the queue. Our next question comes from Maurice Choi with RBC Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Thanks, and good morning. Um, the first question I want to speak on is on um, structures and logistics. Um, obviously, a fairly strong uh, close to the year. Um, I wonder if, um, firstly, you could give us a little bit of uh, insight in, as to the progress on the uh, um, the project related to Coastal Gas Link, if any recent headlines and activities have uh, uh, caused uh, your work there to um, to change, um, and if there's any earnings or cash flow impact into 2020. Um, good morning, thanks, Maurice. Um, you know, we, we've got a couple of projects up in uh, in northern BC. You know, we do have, you know, we have, I'll say, completed the project for Coastal Gas Link. Um, and those camps are operating, so to speak, uh, to the extent that you know our, our element is done. And there, um, can't remember if that's a was a sale or a rental for those coastal gas link projects. In terms of um, our other main project up uh, in northern BC is for LNG Canada. That uh, progress, that project is progressing, we'll say, ahead of schedule. And I think that's what uh, helped to give uh, structures maybe a, a bigger boost than uh, than where we were tracking throughout the year. Um, the manufacturing has been going, um, I'll say, exceedingly well. 
uh, to date, and that allowed us probably a little bit more of a kind of an earnings uplift than what uh, than what people were expecting, and that is unimpacted by any of the uh, social unrest uh, associated with uh, coastal gas link. I uh, suppose as a follow-up, are uh, you um, expecting um, 2020 structures um, and logistics to be as strong as this year, or should we think about it as being some of the 2020 results that would have been recorded has been uh, pushed to 2019? Yeah, there's uh, there, there's a little bit of uh, kind of advancement from those 2020 earnings into 2019. Um, we we continue to secure new contracts in our ATCO structures business, particularly in Australia and in the United States. They have a, a strong lead list. Say, um, you know, we, we do expect 2020 to be a similar type of year for ATCO structure in 2019, and perhaps even better if we can secure some of those uh, additional leads. Great. And, uh, and my final question, just to finish off, and perhaps a follow-up from the uh, conference call that, that you just had, um, and it's about dividend um, and dividend payout ratio. Um, as you mentioned, there is some room in the ATCO uh, payout ratio to, to rise a little bit further, and hence um, there was a higher percentage of increase uh, for 2020. Um, what do you see as an appropriate payout ratio uh, for an infrastructure company like ATCO? Uh, and, to, and, and to that end, um, who are um, the, the kind of peers that you think of when, when, you, when you set your mark? Yeah. Um, right now, given, um, given the, the heavy weighting uh, of ATCO's portfolio in Canadian utilities, uh, I think ATCO probably around 80% uh, regulated uh, earnings through its investment in CU. Um, that's where we're uh, kind of. Uh, that, those are my comments of you know compared to utility peers, and compared to um, conglomerates, you know what we're looking at for we're looking for for growth at ATCO. Our um, our, our dividend income in uh, in ATCO uh, is in, in kind of far in excess of its dividend outflow. So we are retaining cash in order to help the financial strength and fund growth prospects at ATCO. I think uh, right now, or we'll say we're comfortable with that uh, the payout ratio in ATCO in those uh, in the 50 percent the 50s I'll call them um, for ATCO great thank you very much thanks Maurice once again if you have a question please press star then one our next question comes from Mark Jarvie with CIBC capital markets please go ahead Thanks. Um, just wanted to clarify a little bit on the commentary around maybe a bit of the pull forward in, in structures and logistics, and just looking at uh, the timing on some of the contracts in California and Australia. Is it expectation then, even just for 2020, that the front half will be stronger than the back half, or do you guys have line of sight on, on potentially backfilling the back half of 2020 to kind of smooth out the earnings and uh, growth uh, at structures and logistics? Yeah, um, uh, good question, Mark. I, I don't have a, a, a quarterly forecast uh, in front of me for structures. Um, you know, we were slow out of the gate in 2019 in structures, you know, uh, kind of back end weighted into Q3 and Q4, uh, especially as LNG Canada um, got rolling. So we'll continue, continue to see LNG Canada rolling through Q1 and Q2, um, given the um, you know my my earlier comments about you know we we expect a relatively um, similar year in ACO structures, uh, maybe a little bit better if we can get some of the new leads. 
then the, the new leads would fill the back end of the year, and you'll see kind of more of a, a levelized, uh, much more levelized uh, earnings in 2020 than we saw in 2019. Okay. And, and then going back to the comments about um, opportunities in the port business and terminals, and, you know, interestingly, first one here in North America is through Neltume, and, but what about ACO itself, and, you know, taking, you know, maybe outside of Neltume, um, whether maybe you partner yourself with Neltume, or, or what's the options for ACO to put more of its own capital to work, maybe not directly through Neltume in that, in that segment? Yeah, I mean, if it comes to ports, I mean, we'll, uh, I think the opportunities really come through Neltume. I mean, we do have provisions. If uh, if Ultramar, our partner, does not want to proceed, we could proceed, and vice versa. If they want to proceed and us not to proceed, then they could go go for it, kind of outside of Neltume. Um, we we haven't uh, we haven't faced any of those issues yet. But the uh, the potential is there for us to uh, to either of us to go it alone should we choose. Okay. Thanks. That being said, we're probably not up the up the curve yet on our port operatorship expertise. Right. Fair given, enough. Uh, given our short run now. Okay. Thanks, Mark. This concludes the question and answer session. I would like to turn the conference back over to Mr. Miles Dugan for any closing remarks. Thank you, Anastasia, and thank you all for participating today. We appreciate your interest in ATCO, and we look forward to speaking with you again soon. Bye for now. This concludes today's conference call. You may disconnect your lines. Thank you for participating, and have a pleasant day.